This week, it's a game of two halves as we try to match novice house hunters with their ideal homes. I'm going to lead the way. We need to work as a team. We're really glad I came to your house and lent a hand while competing to win. Can't wait <laughs> to tell Phil that he's provided a good package. And not falling foul of the rules. Are you thinking, oh, we're in Nutsford, or are you thinking, oh, there's a road? Oh, there's a road. And when the final whistle blows, we'll be hoping to score the perfect property. Nerves as to whether it's the right house now. This week's destination, the Northwest, where we're searching for family homes in some of the area's most sought-after towns and villages. But with a buoyant market to navigate and expectations to manage, you can forget Lord and Lady of the Manor, Phil and I could end up in the servants' quarters. With our house hunters, we'll be perusing properties in the suburbs of Cheshire and nearby South Manchester. I'm scouring the streets of Cheshire with Chris and Amy, a pair of newlyweds who are ready to buy their first property together. And I'm in South Manchester with accountant Craig Hinchcliffe and his wife Becky, who works as a town planner. With their son Eden, already 18 months old, and another recent addition, they're desperate to upsize. We've just three weeks ago had another little boy, Orphan Lay, which is very exciting, but we've now outgrown our house and we're looking for um, our next family, family home. They've agreed a price of just over £195,000 on their current property. We accepted an offer three weeks after we put the house on the market to first-time buyers, and those first-time buyers have been waiting ever since for us to, to find a house and move on. But that was eight months ago, and since then they viewed over 30 properties. The only one they really liked was let down by a survey. There were some serious issues, and we had to pull out of that property, unfortunately. Pressure's really on. There's less than a month until their buyer's mortgage offer expires, and then all bets are off. But Craig's still after a good deal. So in my own mind, I'd like to have something that we can create that's our own, and then actually add value to it. See you later. Whereas Becky would happily pay a premium for something that's already done. We've now seen so many properties that we are slightly struggling to see the wood for the trees. Come on, Phil, time to battle through the branches and get this couple a new home. Pronto. We better get talking about what we're looking for. OK. Quite sharpish. Pressure's on, Phil. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what are we after? Downstairs space is really key. Um, with, with two boys, grown family. So we're after a really nice um, kitchen dining space at the back. We'd ideally like a, a large garden. I think it is achievable, but there will be compromise somewhere. In order to create the home of your dreams, it's just a question of whether you're both prepared to, to do what it would take. I'm happy to buy a, a property that needs work on it. I have, throughout the course of this search, perhaps lacked a bit of vision for projects, really. I struggle sometimes to see through current decor. You really have got your work cut out on this. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Thanks. <laughs> um, the key thing for me is timing. We mustn't lose your bias. So we must drink up our tea and, and get cracking. Not even time for a biscuit, Phil. Craig and Becky are looking for a four-bedroomed property. A good-sized kitchen, diner and garden are important for their expanding family. They'll consider somewhere that needs work, but the total budget all in is 400,000. No mean feat considering their wish list. And they're not making it any simpler with their search areas. High on the list are Bramall, Timperley and Didsbury, where four-bed houses in the latter can sell for over £650,000. Ouch. Phil certainly got a challenge on his hands in South Manchester, and I don't suppose my Cheshire search will be any easier. I'll be nurturing newlyweds Chris and Amy Buckley. Both physios they met when studying for their second degrees at university five years ago. They're currently renting in Birmingham and want to return to their roots to be closer to friends and family, although it's a wonder they've got any time for house hunting. We do quite a lot of sports and outdoor activities. We've both got mountain bikes and road bikes. We really love um, camping, so we're really active. And it looks like it's more than just Chris and Amy that I'll need to satisfy. Our camper van's called Bit. Our last one was called Wesley, yes. wasn't it? But they do become part of the family. They and... are, yeah. He's definitely an important part of our move. Yeah. 
We want to be able to put the camper van off road, off the road. preferably yeah. in a garage or what have you. But can camp it up wherever he wants as long as he understands compromise. We're happy now that we, we've found the right time that we want to buy and settle and we've just had enough of renting. Easier said than done. I think this pair needs steering in the right direction and I know just the woman for the job. I guess that's my cue, Phil. What is the thing if I said, hand on heart, I want top things you really care about other than location? Not on a main road or overlooking motorways, railways. railways. But not be being great. remote, that there's, no one, that there's no, no one walking past the front of your house. Has to have parking and garage or room for a garage to be built. Right. What about the sort of more romantic sides of things? Do you have a sort of vision in your head of your first home? A few visions, I think. <laughs> the kitchen and the dining. That's, That's something that incredible. in a couple of houses we've lived in, they've been, we've, it's been a focal point. Next That's couple of years, is. we may have children, which if, that, if we're able to, that's great. Yeah. Such wood. We've moved around so many times and we've, we've rented in, and, and it's just because of the way life has panned out. We're so ready now to just find to somewhere that we can just actually stop and stop moving and stop packing yeah. up and unpacking and just really feel at home. It's clear that Chris and Amy need a helping hand from you, Kirsty. With a top budget of £230,000, my couple are looking for a three-bed property, but would consider two bedrooms with the potential to expand. A safe place for Bert, the camper van, and storage for all their sports gear is a must, and they'd love a property with plenty of character. They're also after a peaceful location, which also has good motorway access. A tricky combination. They're searching within the boundaries of the very pricey areas of Lim, Knutsford and Frodsham, which will provide good motorway access for work and leisure pursuits. Both couples are after their dream family home, but with two very different situations. Yeah, Beck and Craig have got themselves in a bit of a pickle. The place that they were buying fell through. Their uh... buyer's been patient and is hanging on, but... They haven't found somewhere to replace the place that fell yes. through. So they've now come to us and said, look, We've only got three weeks before we lose our buy and the whole thing comes crashing down. Uh, so, Amy and Chris, lovely couple, two physios, both from this neck of the woods, moving back here from Birmingham. Yeah. Lovely, 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 fussy. They're the type, you can tell. You haven't even shown them anything no, yet. No, I can tell. Well, if anyone can whip them into shape, it's you, Kirsty. I'm starting my search in Davenport just over a mile and a half north of one of Craig and Becky's hotspots, Bramall. It's an area popular with young families where they'll get more for their money. This is a cracking property in a well-maintained conservation area. Well, here we are. This is the first one. What do you feel about this street? We've seen a previous property on this road that you fell in love with, mm. but it just wasn't the right size. I think this is a fantastic house. It does need some work. And I know you struggle with vision, you, you told me that, Becky, so I'm absolutely here to kind of explain how it could look. This 1930s detached property could fit the bill space-wise with three generous reception rooms and four good-sized bedrooms. It's been on the market for nine months and has already been reduced from 450,000 to 350,000. At 50 grand under budget, that leaves plenty left to modernise the property. It's also a probate sale, so there's no chain. Ideal for Craig and Becky. They need a quick move before they lose their buyers. Through into the front reception room. No, it's a good size, this. Really good size. Yeah, try not to look at the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to want to change things, mm -hmm. but it's not complicated. This could be done in a day. Yes. Yeah. Becky's not put off yet, but now for the real test. Now, this is where we move from cosmetic work to slightly more um, structural work. This is the third reception as things stand. In there is the kitchen. Modern day family life means that chimney breast deserves to come out. The cost of doing that is about £5,000. A kitchen right across the back here, some nice glass doors out onto the lovely garden would transform this house. I'm excited by it. The idea of designing our own kitchen. Is it too much, Becky? Potentially. On a day-to-day -day basis with two very small children, that is what I'm 
currently wondering. The property could also do with rewiring, and we've had an estimate of around £3,000, including replastering. But of course, that means more disruption. And remember, interfering with a structural wall will require building regulation sign off. I'm beginning to really see where Becky stands in terms of work, but I hope upstairs gets her back on side. We're kind of back into cosmetic land here. It's got a really nice feel about it. Those windows just bring in so much light. Help yourself to the other bedrooms. See what you think. Well, this is a big room, isn't it? It is. Uh, this is bigger than the one at the front, but yeah. I think I prefer the one at the front. I chose this one to show them first, very deliberately, because I did want to just kind of see where the boundaries are. And I think I may have crossed the boundary for Becky, crossed the boundary into a project that was just a little bit too big and too scary for her. And I, I completely understand that. I can see it's got potential, but it's... Uh... It's just whether or not it's too much work. Mm. I know this house isn't a ready-made dream, but it really could be the perfect family home on budget and offers real potential to add value. In tip-top condition, this house could easily fetch upwards of 400 grand. Don't give up yet, Phil. Remember, a good-sized garden was also high on their wish list, so perhaps the outside space will sway them. It's only when you get out the back here that you realise quite how big the plot is. Yeah, it is yeah. a really good-sized garden, for sure. There was one other piece of information that I should tell you, and that last night there was an offer made on this house. OK. But, meanwhile, let's keep going and just bear this in mind. Mm. Sounds good. A couple divided and another buyer already interested in the property. No-one said this was going to be easy, Phil. This week, there's no time to waste in the northwest. I'm with a young family who need more space fast. I'm with a pair of newlyweds who say they're sick of renting and want to put down roots. I'm in South Manchester with Craig and Becky. And although the first house I showed them had lots of potential and came in 50 grand under budget, Becky had reservations over taking on a project. Is it too much, Becky? Potentially. It's not a definite no, but I'm really going to have to up the ante for my next property. And I'm searching in Cheshire with Chris and Amy, within a pricey triangle of Lim to the north, Frodsham to the west and Nutsford to the east. They want somewhere semi-rural, yet their search areas are cut across by two large motorways. Although this would allow them to get away easily for their numerous sporting pursuits and family visits, they're seeking the friendly community feel that Cheshire has to offer. It's brilliant schools, there's lots of top grammar schools, lots of prep schools. People are nice, it, it, it's, it's just lovely. There's a local pubs that are doing the local beers, there's local festivals every now and again. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. <laughs> a thumbs up from the locals. Today I'm taking Chris and Amy to Nutsford, a picturesque town fusing a mix of old world charm and modern living. Easy to see why it's one of their preferred locations. But the area comes with a hefty price tag, with the average property price at £320,000, well over the national average. If they genuinely want Nutsford, then this property is the best I can do without blowing a huge hole in their budget. Although they still have to sacrifice character and make one other compromise, one that I'm not sure they can get past. Or should that be here past? What's your feeling now as we stand outside the house? Are you thinking, oh, we're in Nutsford, or are you thinking, oh, there's a road? Oh, there's a road. You're thinking, oh, there's a road. 100%. This is a really, really cracking start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in and look at the house. This 1960s semi-detached property has a good-sized sitting room and open kitchen diner. Upstairs, there are three bedrooms and a family bathroom, plus converted attic space. But the camper van will feel right at home with a driveway at the back. And there's a garage which could be used to store all their sporting equipment. It's on the market just shy of £200,000, 30 grand under budget. And after years of renting, could be the perfect ready-made starter home. Coming in. Front room. It's a decent house. Definitely. Yeah. It's a very positive house, this. Can they look past a bit of road noise for a good house in a great location? Ooh, kitchen yeah. diner. And already done. This is a move-in house. Yeah. 
Look where you wash up. And... Yeah. <laughs> yes. What do we say? <laughs> you wash up looking to a brick wall. Definitely solidified that the outside is more important than, than the, the inside. inside. You can make things look nice inside cosmetically, but we can't change the, the brick walls no. and no. the things no. that surround no. us. No, exactly. I had hoped a ready-to-go property like this could help them compromise on other requirements, but perhaps I was wrong. It can happen, occasionally, not that often. Look at the view out of the window. Yeah. You can see the road. You can hear the road. Oh dear, it's the elephant in the room. I'm sure you know what you're doing though, Kirsty. Why are we here? I hear you ask. Were we not listening? The answer is, this is a perfect first home for them. It's got the space, it's in a good location, it's got the garage, and it's nicely done. If they want semi-rural and super quiet, it is not going to look like this. And they just need to know that. I wonder if Chris and Amy have come to the same realisation. I understand that this is what we would get for our this money in this would, location. Yeah. So that's fine. It ticks it's boxes on a sheet of paper, up. but it doesn't tick boxes in our life. No, but, you know, we've learnt something. We'll just, Definitely. We'll just move on. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. Move on. Move on. Yeah. Right. Within a positive frame of mind. Definitely. I need a career change and a lot more money. <laughs> yes, Chris, without a major budget boost, Nutsford will be a no-no. It's not all plain sailing with my pair either. Craig seemed taken with my first property, but it may have been too much of a project for Becky. However, I hope my next house will put a smile on her face. It's in their number one search spot, Bramall, a Manchester suburb that's popular with families and according to a research study by Sheffield University, the friendliest place to live in Britain. First thoughts are it's bigger than I was expecting mm. for our budget. It's getting yeah. attached to the size. It's got double fronted plus a garage, so I think it's going to be big and spacious inside. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> this detached property is on at the top end of their budget, at just a scrap under £400,000, which may raise a few eyebrows with accountant Craig. But this house meets a lot of their criteria. There's a large lounge running the length of the downstairs at just under 30 foot long, which extends out into a conservatory. Upstairs, there are five bedrooms and a family bathroom. Could this be the move-in to property that Becky has in mind? Let's head through to the kitchen to start with. Um, it's probably seen better days, but it is... <laughs> Look at Becky's face. Mm. You're almost as phased by oak cupboards as you are <laughs> knocking down chimney stacks. <laughs> Come on, let's have a look at the next room. Becky doesn't seem able to get past the dated decor to imagine how she could make the space her own. Definitely a diagnosis of tunnel vision. Thanks, Dr Allsop. It's quite narrow. narrow. Yeah. But it does open right up into the conservatory. Uh, given this house also has a dining room, you have got a lot of living space. I can see how practically this would work. I'm wondering whether I'm getting that vibe from it and I don't know why. I can find properties that meet a list of requirements, but there's no magic formula for the vibe. I need to find out from Craig how this has affected their search so far. The last thing I want to do is put any extra pressure on Becky. Is her looking for the feeling? Has that proved to be the obstacle? I've looked around so many houses and thought, it's, it's fantastic, it meets all the criteria. She just doesn't get that spark. Um, and I think that's the hurdle we've been trying to clear. Unless we can move things forward, you will lose your buyer because their mortgage will expire. And then, how will she feel then? And she'd be upset to think that it was her that put a halt to that process. Running this close to the wire with their house sale, this is one problem that needs resolving fast. It's nice with the dual windows. Yes, that, that is true. What an age-old dilemma this is, house versus location. This house is in their number one location. But if they can't go for the house, then my conclusion is that the house wins out over location. So I've got to get my thinking cap on. I've done it where I put it, <laughs> but I've got to find it and put it on a bit quick. I think it might take more than just dressing up Phil to find Becky and Craig the right property. Could you pitch yourselves here? 
I'm struggling to, if I'm, I'm being honest. I know you're trying to achieve the feeling, and everybody does. It's very elusive, isn't it? It's this tough. Feeling. Yeah. <laughs> it's this tough. feeling that I'm looking for. <laughs> Even in what is their prime location, they're just not sold on the house. And I'm no better off with my house hunters, Chris and Amy. They love the area of Nutsford where we started off, but finding somewhere with character was proving tricky on a budget. So I brought them nine miles north to the picturesque village of Lim. Bustling with restaurants and wine bars, it's an expanding village, yet small enough to have a real sense of community. And it's got the motorway access they were after. As it happens, they've already seen my property online and liked its style, so that's a good start. They say many hands make light work, so I've drafted in Phil for the afternoon. So, Phil, Amy, Chris. Hello, hello, hello. hello. How hello. are you doing? Just to fill you in, Phil, the last house uh, was vetoed because of the road noise. OK. Well, it's a quiet spot here, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but Amy and Chris quite like the look of this one, so they suggested that we come and had a look at it. This late 19th century cottage is packed full of the character we think they're after. Downstairs, the sitting room follows straight through to a kitchen diner, as well as three bedrooms and a family bathroom. There's plenty of driveway space for Bert, the camper van. Having already seen it online and yet still being willing to take a look inside despite the road noise is promising. They're definitely paying a premium for character and area, as the asking price is five grand over the 230,000 they have to spend. But having been on and off the market for a year, I'm confident there's room for negotiation. Usually in these houses, they have these tiny kitchens, you see? But this is not a tiny kitchen. Thanks and it's a kitchen diner. diner. It's a kitchen diner and there's a 90-foot garden. With access at the back. Garden much. looks nice. You're smells. smelling so. Ah, <laughs> oh, the smell. Is the smell a problem? I said to Chris that I would never want to buy a house that smelled of smoke. I myself bought a flat that smelled of smoke. I had to strip the plaster down to the walls. As you're struggling with the smell in this house, would you like to accompany me into the garden? I'd love to. <laughs> this is not good news. At Property One, Amy said that the outside was more important than the inside. And yet, despite the fact work could be done to remove the smell of smoke, she seems to have pretty much instantly ruled it out. So, kind of kids' bedroom in there, guest bedroom here. It's quite small, isn't it? But just whether there's enough room for the future. I'd be worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're moving on. I guess Chris isn't taken by this property either, then. Well, all going well here, then. You know, I'm really glad I came to your house and lent a hand. Great. Can I come again? No, it's fine. It's just I want them to understand that there are probably quite a few sacrifices that have to be made. This morning, they learned that they'd had to sacrifice Nutsford to road noise, and this afternoon, mm. they've learned they'll have to sacrifice character to road noise. Quite yeah. low with the ceilings, isn't it? Yeah. You'd bang your head on there. Yeah. <gasps> the thing is, Amy and I are very similar. I think separated at birth. I don't quite know what to say. One of you is quite enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, has anything improved for you, Amy? Um, I'm going to be honest and say no. <laughs> and I... it, the smell, I can't get over the smell. I can't get past that. And I'd have to agree with Ames. I don't think this is right for us. It's, it's fine. Tomorrow we're going to go into the countryside. <laughs> we're going to we're going to <laughs> chuck away this semi-rural pretense. <laughs> we're going to head for silence. <laughs> I'm going to lead the way. Up to you. <laughs> in South Manchester, Becky wasn't getting the feeling from property two, even though it was in their number one location of Bramall. Next stop, 10 minutes west to Heald Green. It's an area they're not too familiar with, but as the last property showed, house is perhaps more important than location. I'm showing them this imposing property at the end of a cul-de-sac. On the market, £360,000, so well within budget. That's the kind of house that gives you the, the wow factor when you look at it. <laughs> yeah. Do you like it? That We're much? on fire well, today. Yeah. Sounds positive. I hope Becky gets the feeling here. 
With modern decor, there are two reception rooms and a large kitchen diner, providing lots of space for a growing family. Upstairs, there are four good-sized bedrooms and a spacious bathroom. It's certainly a far cry from the project property in Davenport, so I wonder what they'll make of it. As you can see, there's a lot of space. And it's got glass doors. The glass doors as onto well. the garden that we wanted, the light, airy feel. Yeah, it's really nice, yeah. <laughs> There's a smile, Becky. There is. And now I'm going to make Craig smile because this is on the market for three hundred and sixty thousand. Very good. Come on, follow me. Phil, I think you may have just struck gold. And then threw in to the most magnificent playroom. Wow! Wow! This is cool. This is just absolutely perfect. I'm just excited to see the rest now. I know. Come on, <laughs> let's do some more. Not wishing to tempt fate, but I think I might have hit the jackpot here. I hope the smiles continue as they keep exploring. Wow. That's a good size. That's really room, good. Isn't it? Nice, isn't it? It's got that feeling. And it's got the feeling. Really nice. Well, this is what I was hoping for out of today. Smiles on both faces. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. I think you've scored, Phil. I guess we were hoping for maybe a little bit more space. In the master? Yeah, maybe. Let's... Just when we put our furniture in, it might feel quite small because we've currently got a big bedroom. I hope they're not getting put off. This really is the property that delivers. Still smiling, you two? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I am as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one you picked this time. Plot's really nice and you get the feel from this house oh, as well. Oh, definitely. The elusive feel. <laughs> yeah. I'm delighted. I'm delighted that you're delighted. <laughs> I'm also rather relieved. <laughs> but will Craig and Becky still like it once they've slept on it? This week, I'm with Amy and Chris, a pair of outdoorsy newlyweds who are in active pursuit of their first marital home. And I'm with Becky and Craig, who, after the arrival of baby number two, are bursting at the seams and desperate for more space. My couple, Chris and Amy, have rejected both properties so far. You'd bang your head on there. Ooh. A smoky interior at one. I can't get over the smell. And road noise at both were enough to drive them away. Whereas my pair seemed impressed by the feel of property three in Heald Green, although it wasn't an area they knew well. And despite reservations from Becky, property one in Davenport isn't completely off the table. But never one to rest on my laurels, I've got another up my sleeve. It's a fantastic house in Timperley, an area I know they like, so this could be a double whammy. The property's only been on the market a week, but there's already lots of interest. It is a great house, but I know Becky can take some convincing, on top of which we're really up against it time-wise to make sure they don't lose the buyers on their house. So I brought Kirsty along to work her magic. So we've had a great viewing. All very positive. I wanted to try and top it with this house. It's super peaceful. This is probably how I imagine my next house, so I'm excited to go inside. I can see why Becky's excited. An attractive exterior, and it just gets better inside, with a large master bedroom, three additional bedrooms, and a good-sized bathroom. Downstairs, there's plenty of living space for a growing family, but the garden is certainly smaller than the other properties in the running and it's on right at the top end of their budget, £395,000. So, final further dice, proper Victorian house with all the trimmings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is really, really nice. You've almost got a smile on as well. Come on, let's go and see some more. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I think this room is fantastic, but I'll say straight out, I think it needs a bit of colour. It's quite orange. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my first thought. Really good size. Really good size, fantastic onto the garden. Yeah. yeah. Very similar in size to our current kitchen diner, which we love. Craig, should we go this way? Yeah. Right. Look at the Bedrooms it is. I know that Becky struggles with vision, but this place is already done, so I hope she's getting the right vibe. So... Gosh. <laughs> it's very light, Amazing. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm feeling feeling confident with this one. It's seeming good. It feels like it's got the package, actually, of everything that we've been looking for. <laughs> and I don't think I'll have much Can't hard time. wait <laughs> to tell <laughs> Phil that he's provided a good package. <laughs> now, now, Kirsty. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? 
What do you think about it? Upstairs is fantastic in this house. Garden is small, potentially. Let's take a look at the garden. Yeah. Craig's been so positive about all the houses, he just wants to get this sorted. He wants Becky to be happy. She's happy. the whole thing to be sorted and behind them. Yeah. But all she... you have to do is just now get the process going. Just get your offer in. She said you'd presented a gorgeous package and I didn't comment, so get your offer in. <laughs> Thank you. This is the right house. But it's not a done deal yet. Becky's got the feeling but I'm not sure Craig's won over. I guess this is probably the only compromise, really, isn't it? The, the garden, just a bit smaller than it's, all the other properties. It is quite small, isn't it? Well, not small, but... But it's long and thin. Yeah. It's just not the garden we thought we'd have. Still beaming, you two. <laughs> yeah. When we walked into this house, it had the feel and the wow factor that you wanted. Mm. But as we've gone through the house, there's a couple of compromises. Uh, and that's really the, the outside space. Mm, we do really like it, so there's plenty to, yeah. plenty to think about. That's a good night's sleep you won't be having. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, their, their baby's only a month old. They won't be having it anyway. <laughs> no, no, <that's> true. <laughs> this house seems to have blown property three out of the water and still leaves two properties in the running for Craig and Becky. But they'll need to agree quickly on which one to go for or they'll lose their buyers and then they won't be going anywhere. At least your couple have options, Phil. If only I had the same luck in Cheshire. Don't fret, Kirstles. You know what they say, third time's a charm. I do hope so. This really is my last chance to impress. It's clear I need somewhere peaceful. So I brought Chris and Amy to Hire Whitley, a village well within their preferred location triangle, yet still only a couple of miles to the nearby motorway. What can we hear? Wind, trees. Wind, trees, birds. 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 No main road. No, but... Bez is a bit... I mean, this is Cheshire. There is always road noise somewhere, but no, no main road. No meow, 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 meow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very peaceful. What you've got is huge amounts of space. So there's no actual garage as such, but there's masses of space and you can do what you want. I like. I like. I like. I like. I like. As well as the generous outside space at the front, there's storage at the back and inside. A well-proportioned living room, second reception room, which is currently being used as a bedroom and kitchen. Upstairs, there are four bedrooms, but the only bathroom in the house is downstairs. It could do with some modernisation, and that's reflected in the price, with offers invited in the region of £200,000. So, coming in... Currently, that's a downstairs bathroom. I think you'd make that into a TV room. And then you've got to imagine that wall is gone, and this is one huge room. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Oh, positive noises. I like. And then you've got a large paved area and a head. Come and have a look at the kitchen. Yes. What there is of it. <laughs> You just yeah. need to open that bit so yeah. it feels a bit more, more in this spacious. room. Yeah. But don't lose this bit. No, you as need being like separate. a section yes. off, don't you? Yeah. yeah. There's lots that you, you can do. Yeah. They don't seem to be put off by the task of bringing it up to date. You may be onto a good one here, Kirsty. Shall we go in here for. Okay? There's loft access. I'd suggest moving the bathroom upstairs or at least creating a second one, which would reduce the number of bedrooms from four to three. But with a large loft space, an extra bedroom could be reinstated. And I think Chris has had the same idea. Ah, so you could See? have bathroom, uh, toilet, bedroom, bedroom, yeah, bedroom. If I had taken Chris and Amy to see this house first, they wouldn't be looking at it in such a positive light. It's only now, having seen the houses on the busy roads, the houses that are small, that they can see this house for what it is. That's how it works. If you take someone to see just one perfect house, they don't see how perfect it is. Lots of trees. It's a lovely setting, isn't really it? Really nice. Do you like the potential that it has? Yeah, it's got loads. Despite needing the most work out of all the properties I've shown them, I wonder if Chris and Amy have been swayed by the peace and tranquility of Hire Whitley. There's so much space outside and inside. Yeah. I think we need to go and have a bite to eat and think a bit. 
that's but we're back on track. Definitely. Yes. Most definitely. definitely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Overnight, Craig and Becky have done some thinking, and I'm keen to see where their heads are at. How are you both feeling today? I think we're maybe, as you might have predicted, in slightly different camps at the moment. Yeah. I'm in favour of the last one that we saw. In Timperley. Although, obviously, there is the compromise over the garden, but it ticks every other box apart from that. And Craig's still fighting for his project. I take it you're talking about house number one? Yeah. I just think it's the house that offers best future potential. There was an offer that we knew about that had been made when I rang the agent this morning. He was unclear whether that offer had been accepted or whether was at an acceptable level. You've seen it and therefore you are invited to return to make an offer. They'll listen to you, they'll discuss it. I think we've got to make a decision as to what which house we prefer. You are up against it in terms of your buyer. You will lose your buyer. I think if we let too many hours pass by, you will be out of the game at Timperley. Given that there are more viewings happening this afternoon, I would prefer to see you keep in the game on that and go and see it and make your decision. But it's entirely up to you. Yeah. Timperley, yeah. OK. OK. I think that's a wise move, Phil. As much as Craig wants his project, I can't see Becky being swayed by Davenport, whereas Timperley seems to satisfy most of their criteria. Well, well, well. It's a very nice house, isn't it? It is. <laughs> You're smiling again. Hello. I caught you. <laughs> I know, it's nice to be back. Yeah. The one issue with this house, or the one compromise, is the garden, so if we're going to overcome that hurdle, mm. then this gets the green light. Go and have a look. I was going to say take your time, but don't, <laughs> because there are more people coming to see it. Crikey. This is going to get extremely tense. But body language and gut reaction to coming into something is so important. And Becky's first reaction of coming here was wonderful. And today she's come in, big smiles back, happy. Not sure that Craig's quite so happy, though. I fear it may be last-minute jitters. Remember, Craig was hoping for a good deal, and this really is sailing dangerously close to the top of their budget, at £395,000, although it only seems to have one drawback. I think on reflection, I feel a bit more positive about the garden. I think whilst it's not as big as we'd like, it offers everything that we, can, we probably need. Could a resolution be on the cards? How'd you get on? Good. I think... Uh, I think... Becky got the feeling, and uh, she's trying to persuade me. I think I might have succeeded. Yeah. So... What would you like to do? Yeah. You could like to put it up, please. You think you'd like we to? We would do, we would, would and, we? And we is are that the going royal to. we, or, or, or is that Becky? Um, Becky got the feeling. I put an offer in every house I see. <laughs> That's but, very true. <laughs> <laughs> Becky's actually decided to join me on this one. I'm chuffed to bits that you're together on this. It's a fantastic house. Still. Yeah. Let's go and see what we can do about it. Fantastic. Because there's all the viewings happening right now. Five <laughs> minutes, there's one, ten minutes, there's another one. <laughs> Get a move on, Phil, or all your hard work with this couple will have been in vain. We're in the northwest of England, where newlyweds Chris and Amy have been struggling to find the perfect family home but did take a shine to a property in Higher Whitley. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. What positive noises. And after months of searching, and at the risk of losing the buyer on their house if they delay any longer, Craig and Becky have been won over by a four-bed Victorian house in Timperley, South Manchester. And it's up to me to seal the deal. But with so many other viewings lined up, realistically, I think we're going to have to make an asking price offer to be in with a chance. I know Craig wanted a good deal, so this could be a bitter pill to swallow. How about we pose the question, if you were to submit a full asking price offer, would they take it off the market? Yeah, yeah. If. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I think. Let's try that. <laughs> if he says no, then... Yeah. We know where we stand, don't we? Yeah. 
Hi, Peter. I've got a question for you. If they were to make an asking price offer, would your client be minded to take it off the market, shut the door, and discuss it with nobody else? Hmm. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. Bye. If that happened, he would recommend that his client took the asking price offer and took it off the market. If your offer was less than the asking price, he would probably wouldn't bother. <laughs> What's the matter? There is no option, is there really? It's the 395. It's whether you want to pay that money for that house or you walk away and you don't buy it. That's the choice, isn't it? It's just hard making a decision so quickly, I think, after seeing it. I think let's let's do it. I think we should. Yeah? I think we should do, yeah. yeah. Let's do it. We can put the offer forward, can't we? Yeah. Hi, Peter. With the knowledge that you would recommend an asking price offer, Craig uh, and Becky will pay the 395. OK, thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Peter. Bye-bye. He will put the offer forward. My nerves now have changed from... Uh, <laughs> nerves as to whether it's the right house now. So we'd better get that house. <laughs> <laughs> While Phil and his pair wait anxiously for an answer, I've still got some way to go before we can even talk of offers. <laughs> I'm back in Higher Whitley with Chris and Amy. They've decided to revisit Property 3, the only one that was really in the running for them, along with Camper Van Burt, to see if it could be their first family home. It's in very yeah. nicely, very nicely. Yeah. Perfect. Are you happy with that? Are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah, all happy with that. <laughs> right, OK, in we go. You're matching the door. <laughs> right, the joy of second viewings is you've seen it before. You yes. go where you want. Wow, yeah, fantastic. I love this room. Feel, yeah. What do you feel as you come back? I think it feels, particularly coming into this room, quite homely. It just needs loving again, it doesn't does it? It does need loving again. Have a look upstairs, see if it still feels the same. Okay. I think it does. I know this property would be a fair undertaking, and if they're seriously considering moving or creating an additional bathroom upstairs, they'll need around £5,000 to pull this off. But at 30 grand under their budget, it should be workable. So, yeah, you could probably have a decent-sized shower in here as well. Mm, yeah. A separate bath, toilet, basin, done deal. Sounds promising, Kirsty, but is it enough to convince Chris and Amy to take the next step? How are you feeling at this point? Positive. I'm feeling... Very, yeah. very positive. I think we need to just go away and have a really good... We just need to sit down and look at the sums it. on at, the yeah. bathroom. Yeah. yeah, that's what we'd really like to look into. So, off you go, do your thinking. Thank you and very much. I know you're a Yorkshireman, Chris. <laughs> yes. But if you want me to negotiate this purchase of this house for you, ring me. I think I might need to. Because I know Yorkshire men think they can do these things themselves, <laughs> but that's not always true. Thank you very much. Pleasure, treasure. See you. Seems pretty positive. I guess I'll just have to sit patiently by the phone. A lot like Phil's couple are doing, waiting to hear back about their asking price offer on the Timpley property. There it is. Peter, that was quick work. What happened? OK. Well, that's terrific. Thank you, Peter. I shall pass on the news. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye. All good news. <laughs> oh, the bank balance! <laughs> Don't worry about that now. Um, all good news. The vendor is happy to take it off the market as of now. Excellent. It's good stuff. We've got a new house. Yay! Can I have a glass of wine now? Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well thank done. You. I know that was very difficult. difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. We just needed that pushing into a corner to... Probably did. ..to commit. You feel better now. Yeah. Good. Terrific. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Should we get something stronger? Yeah, yes, I think so. 
Exciting news for Craig and Becky. But it's a different story for Chris and Amy, who went away to consider the Hire Whitley house. Unfortunately, they considered it for a little too long. And a few days after their second viewing, an offer was accepted on the property. They continued their search and have just had an offer accepted on a three-bed new-built semi in Lim. And I hope they'll be very happy in their home. After almost eight months of pressure trying to find a new home before losing their buyer, Craig and Becky have bought and moved into the beautiful family home in Timperley in less than four weeks. So that was quite stressful, um, but a huge relief once we actually got the keys. And we've never stopped working since, have we? <laughs> yeah, just a really exciting time, really. Their only compromise was garden size. Boom. Which isn't proving a problem for 18-month-old Eden. And now we're in. We've really enjoyed the space. We're constantly having barbecues. It's like a sun trap out there. Accountant Craig struggled with offering the full asking price, but strong competition from other buyers meant anything less could have cost them their perfect home. Sometimes you just have to see through the price. And I just think this house is going to grow with the family, so I think that's a price worth paying, really. This house has provided all that we could have hoped for, plus a bit more, so um, we're really, really, really pleased. 